Okay, right back in the quadratics chapter, we looked at some of these things that I called pseudo quadratics or quadratics in other terms. And so we're re revisiting them now that we've got some new skills to do with exponentials and logarithms. So just to start off with, I wanted to explain why we can't just take logarithms of this particular thing. It's a bit like the squaring function, okay? If I wanted to take logs of this, some people think that you could do like, oh, I could do ln of 4 to the power of 2x minus ln of 6 times 4 to the power of x plus ln 5 equals ln 0. And you might think that that's something you can do, but you cannot do this, okay? This does not work. I'm going to put a red line through this. This doesn't work. This is in the same way that if you have an equation like this, I don't know, 2 plus 6 equals 8. If you wanted to do the squaring function, sometimes people do this. They go, oh, it's 2 squared. Great, I'll square that. Great, I'll square that. And great, I'll square that. But this doesn't work because then you have 4 plus 36 equals 64. So it doesn't work. You can't square each thing individually. If you wanted this to work, you would have to square the entire thing on that side and you would have to square the entire thing on this side. So we're not going to do this method, but if you wanted to take logs, you would have to take logs of 4 to the power of 2x minus 6 times 4 to the power of x plus 5 equals ln of 0. Okay, and so ln of 0, I think we're going to come into some issues with ln of 0 anyway, so we wouldn't be ever doing ln of 0. But if you wanted to take logs, you have to take it of the entire thing. So we're going to just put a line through this because this isn't really going to be useful, but I wanted to leave it there in case you're taking those notes. Instead, this is actually going to be a type of quadratic. What you'll notice is this power that we have at the beginning is double this power that we've got here. So you may be able to recognize this straight away, but I'm going to try and um, show you that this is a quadratic equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let y equal 4 to the power of x. Now, what is going to be 4 to the power of 2x? Well, it's going to be y squared. Let me just quickly show you why. If y is 4 to the power of x, then y squared is 4 to the power of x, all squared. And remember, when you've got brackets, these two powers are going to multiply, so you get the power of 2x. So we can now substitute everything in. This 4 to the power of 2x at the beginning is y squared. We can see that here. And then we've got minus 6. So let's write that in. We've got minus 6 multiplied by 4 to the power of x. And 4 to the power of x is y. And I have plus 5, which is equal to 0. Now, I can factorise this, or I can just use my polynomial solver. I'm going to be lazy and use my polynomial solver. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I'll go to the equation function and I'm going to put in the coefficients of 1, minus 6 and 5. And it tells me that either y is equal to 5 or y is equal to 1. Let's just quickly move some of this out of the way. So all we need to do is actually find out what x is. Now, remember y we replaced with 4 to the power of x. So we've got 4 to the power of x equals 5, or we've got 4 to the power of x equals 1. Well, this one you can do without your calculator. Clearly, x has got to be equal to 0. And for this one, we can rewrite this statement that the log power sorry, of base 4 that gives you 5 is x. So we're just going to say what that is as a decimal. I'm going to do log base 4 of 5, and it is 1.161 to three decimal places. So we've got 1.161. And so my answers are 1.161 and 0. Let's just write that. So my answers are either x equals 0 or x equals 1.161. OK, so this is another good example to show that you can't just do logs. Some people might want to try this. They might want to do ln of 8 to the power of 2x minus ln of 12 equals ln of 8 to the power of x. That's not going to work because of what I'd said up here about the, applying the function to the entire side. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you could try and do this. Let's do it with the correct base. Let's do a log base 8. Of, well, let's do ln again. I like ln. Let's do ln of the entire side. 8 to the power of 2x minus 12 
equals ln of 8 to the power of x. Okay, well, great, but what can we do about this? There's nothing we can do about this. You can't split this. Don't be confused. This is a subtraction. You can't split this into a division. It's the other way around. If we had ln of 8 to the power of 2x divided by 12, then we can split it into a subtraction. But if you've got a subtraction inside a log function, you can't split that. So we get stuck. We can't apply logs. Instead, we're going to try and make this a quadratic. So let's try and replace this. Let's say that y is equal to 8 to the power of x then y squared would be 8 to the power of 2x. So I can replace some things now. I have y squared minus 12 equals y. Cool, it's starting to look like a quadratic. So I'll do y squared minus y minus 12 equals 0. I'm going to go back to my equation solver with 1 minus 1 and minus 12. And my solutions are that y is equal to 4 or y is equal to minus 3. So we've got 8 to the power of x equals 4, or 8 to the power of x equals minus 3. So this would mean that x is going to be the log base 8 of 4. Let's do that on the calculator. Log base 8 of 4. Oh, great. That's actually just an exact answer. Just going to be 0 0.66666. It's actually going to be 2 thirds, OK? Kind of makes sense actually. 8 to the power of 2 thirds is going to be 4. Yeah, because the cube root of 8 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. So I don't even need to. Oh, they did ask for three decimal places, so I guess I should do 0 0.667, but we can give it an exact form. I want you to think to yourself what's the solution going to be for this one? Well, there is going to be no solution. We know that exponential functions are always greater than 0. So 8 to the power of x is always greater than 0 for all values of x. So there are, for this one, no solutions. I'll show you what happens if I try to do log base 8 of minus 3. Log base 8 of minus 3, we get this uh, complex number here, which means that it doesn't have any real solutions. So this one has no solutions. So the only answer that we have is this one that we've got here. Okay, I'm not going to do that demonstration before of like, oh, we can't take logs because of this bit where we've got them being subtracted. So instead, what we're going to do, um, I mean, maybe we could do this one in a different way. I might try it in a second way. I can see that there's possibly a way that we could do this, but we're going to try it using the, the pseudo quadratic method, first of all. So let's say that y is going to be equal to 3 to the power of x. We're going to need to do a little bit of messing around here to see what else we get. So y squared would be 3 to the power of 2x. We've also got this 3 to the power of x plus 1 that we need to deal with. Well, remember your index laws. This is 3 to the power of x multiplied by 3 to the power of 1. So we could actually say this is going to be y multiplied by 3 or 3y. So now I know this thing is 3y, this thing is y squared, and then we've just got the minus 4 here. So let's try it. We're going to say the first one was 3y. We've then got the 3 to the power of 2x, which is y squared. And then we've got minus 4. So it's a quadratic. So it's like another quadratic. So we're going to do y squared minus 3y minus 4. I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to put the coefficients as 1, minus 3, and minus 4. And so I get that y is equal to 4, or y is equal to minus 1. Let's go up here. So if y is equal to 4, that is 3 to the power of x equals 4. So x is going to be the power of 3 that gives me the answer 4. Log base 3 that gives me 4 which is 1.262 to three decimal places. And for the same reason as before, if y is minus 1, we get 3 to the power of x equals minus 1. There's going to be no solutions, because you can't have an exponential function being equal to a negative. So we just need to say there's no solutions for that one. Now, I'm wondering if there's another way we could have done this question. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and actually, because um, I said you can't take logs of this whole thing because it's going to get messy. Let's see if we could do it. 
we could do maybe a division. No, I can't see a different way of doing this question. I think this one has to be done as a quadratic type. Um, yeah, this one has to be done as a quadratic type. I didn't mean to mention that earlier. Okay, so this last one here, um, maybe we need to change this one into a quadratic type. No, I'm hoping you're telling me it doesn't because look, they've got the same base and there's nothing extra getting in the way. There's no extra constant term like there was here, here and here. So because there's some extra constant terms that we had to make them into quadratics, this one there is no extra constant term. So this one is actually a bit of a trick question. This one is not like the others. It's just like the equations in the previous video. So this one I'm going to be able to do using my standard technique. I'm going to take logs of both sides. So if you want, this one we could, because they've both got a base of 5. I've got 5 to the power of x plus 1 equals 5 to the power of 2x minus 4. If I took logs of log base 5 of both sides, it's going to be really quick. I would just get x plus 1 equals 2x minus 4. And I guess that's pretty obvious to spot because these powers are clearly equal to each other. It's the only way that those two sides would be equal. So when I solve this equation, I add the 4 and I subtract the x, and I get that x is equal to 5. That's the only solution that I'm going to have to that one that I've got there. OK, so don't be tricked. This one was a trick question. Um, just take logs of both sides if you can do. So now what you should do is try question two and question four from exercise 14F.